welcome to Biostock. Comigene is the only listed gene therapy company in the Nordic region. Having just released their Q2 report, I'm joined in the studio today by CEO Jan Nilsson to discuss the latest developments. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Mike. Nice to be here. It's good to have you here. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to begin by, with uh, your, your uh, collaboration with Zainero. Mm -hmm. um, you are collaborating to develop uh, two uh, treatments for chronic pain. Mm -hmm. One of these treatments is a gene therapy. And I'd like to know, how is gene therapy going to change the game within chronic pain? That's a good, very good question. And you have to look back at what is actually available for treating chronic pain today. And the drugs out there are not really developed to treat pain. They are anti-epileptic drugs, anti-inflammatory drugs, and of course opioids. Mm -hmm. And they all come with, with uh, severe side effects. And they aren't really fit for a chronic use. You know, uh, the opioid crisis in the U.S. have taken 700,000 Americans' lives over the last 20 years. Yeah. So in, in that respect, you can say when you have a patient where you expect this uh, patient to have a chronic pain for the rest of her or his life, then gene therapy can be a, a very, very good option. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, uh, within this collaboration, you're also developing a peptide. Yes. Uh, for those who aren't aware, what, is the, what are the differences here between a peptide and, and gene therapy? Uh, the peptide is developed to actually treat temporary severe uh, chronic pain, right? Mm -hmm. Whilst the, the uh, gene therapy is for lifelong treatment or just a few administration during your life. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that they actually work by the same principle, the same mechanism of action. So you can actually use the peptide, which is going to be given sub-Q, for example, subcutaneous, right? Like mm -hmm. insulin. For a limited period of time then. That's, that's the therapeutic place for that drug, right? Yeah. But you can also use it when you have a, a, a candidate for the gene therapy in front of you to test to see that that individual responds in a positive way mm -hmm. before you actually administer the more expensive gene therapy. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how the collaboration is, is moving along, in June you announced the uh, formation of a scientific advisor board, mm -hmm. a joint scientific advisor board, together with Zainiro. Uh, could you tell us more about that? Well, it's... Uh, it's going to happen in very recent, in, in near term. Mm -hmm. It's just a few weeks away in, in the UK. Uh, so we have a, a group of my people going together with a group of uh, Sangiro people going to meet with key opinion leaders within the pain field, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the really tricky questions, there, or important questions, just not tricky, but important, is to select what indication are we going to develop first for the peptide? Mm -hmm. And what indication is the first one we're going to develop for the for the AAV. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another other interesting features going on of uh, course and we're going to have going to choose the CMO. Yeah. Now, that's one of the most important decisions throughout the development of the new pharmaceutical. It's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that CMO will will be linked to our peptide for the rest of the peptide's life, so yeah. to speak. And the same with the the CRO going which are going to do with the toxicology studies before we can go into math. All right, so. A lot is happening. A lot is happening, <laughs> a lot is going on. Yeah. Um, well, go, moving forward to another collaboration you have, mm -hmm. the collaboration with Spark Therapeutics, mm -hmm. which is within your uh, epilepsy program. Yeah. Um, could you update us a little bit on the collaboration? As far as I understand it, Spark came to, to visit Combijing this summer. Could you tell us more yeah. about that? Yeah, we have a very good collaboration. This is one of their prioritized preclinical projects. You can see that on the web page. Mm -hmm. uh, we have four joint research committee meetings a year, two of which are in person. And we had one now in June, as you said, in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And as a sign of their um, you know, commitment and enthusiasm, they flew in seven people to Stockholm. And we had another three or four on, online on Zoom meetings, uh, joining in a certain part of that. That was a two and a half day meeting. Mm -hmm. The next one's going to happen in, in person in December for a two and a half meeting, uh, days meeting in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going well. This big company, they, do, they have enlarged the preclinical program, of course. Yeah. You know, being a, sm a small company, we are lean and mean. They can do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, moving on to uh, shifting gears completely, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Within the company itself, You've mentioned uh, recently that you're stepping down as CEO. Mm -hmm. um, 
before we jump into what you will do next, could you tell us a little bit about the legacy of, of Comagene that, that you're kind of leaving behind? Cool. In one minute? <laughs> it, it, as you said, we are the only gene therapy in the Nordic region. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, and I think we have very interesting products. Uh, we have the Spark Deal mm-hmm. on CD01. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a fantastic team of individuals that are working with, with, uh, with us. We have money in the bank, mm-hmm. which is extremely important these days. Mm-hmm. So I think, uh, you know, leaving the helmet to Peter is... Uh, you, you should, should quit when you're on top, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, you, you mentioned Peter. Uh, yeah. g- could you tell us a little bit of m- about him as well and why he's the, the perfect man for this, yeah. uh, for this role? Peter joined us last fall mm-hmm. as the chief operating officer. And he comes with an ex- extensive experience, both from the pharmaceutical industry and the medtech industry, both from large companies mm-hmm. and from biotech or smaller companies, right? Mm-hmm. And he has, you know, natural leadership, and he has worked as a CEO in several of those uh, instances. Mm-hmm. He's done a great work so far. So I, I, you know, I'm very confident to leave the helmet to him in his capable hands mm-hmm. moving forward. And finally, uh, what about you? What will you be doing? Will you be staying at Combi Jane, or I will be staying in a consultancy role, mm-hmm. uh, not full time but part time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I won't leave the company. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, mm-hmm. I think still think that the best days for Combin is still ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, gra- uh, glad to hear, and uh, we definitely look forward to uh, continuing to follow uh, Combi Jane. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today for this interview. Thank you.